everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we're going to be diving into what life insurance is, understanding the different types of insurance you can get and why you may want to consider getting one. I'm Kozan from Financial Planners, helping you be better with your money. So let's first off understand the basics. So when you actually delve into this more deeply, you may see the term life insurance and life assurance used interchangeably. But there is actually a significant difference between the two. So life insurance and life assurance are both financial products that usually pays out a tax free lump sum or a monthly income to your beneficiaries. These are the individuals that will benefit from your insurance when you pass away. The difference between the two is that life insurance covers you for a specific time frame, whereas life assurance covers you for your entire life. This is also known as whole of life cover, which I'll delve in shortly. Both life insurance and assurance do come with a cost. So whilst you are living, you will have to pay a premium or a monthly fee to have this cover. Now the cost of these premiums will vary from person to person and the insurer can take into account things such as your age, your health, your occupation and the type of policy you would like. So let's start off with life insurance, which is a type of term insurance. Term insurance is typically on the cheaper scale when it comes to all of the life insurance and assurance products. With a term insurance policy, you choose the amount you want to be covered and you have to choose how long you want to be covered too. With covers typically ranging from five to 40 years, with 10 and 20 years being the more commonly offered options. So this means that with this type of cover, your beneficiaries will only get paid if you die within the term you've predefined in your policy. If you don't die, however, the policy doesn't actually pay out anything and you don't get a refund either. So if this does happen and you still want life insurance cover, you will need to purchase a new policy to cover for another term. Now there are three main types of term insurance that you can choose from. First off is something called the decreasing term. As the name suggests, the size of the payout to your beneficiaries will decrease the further you are in your policy. So essentially the policy pays out less to your beneficiaries if you pass away later in your term. This can be ideal for those that have financial obligations that will get smaller over time, such as large debts and a mortgage. Secondly is something called increasing term. As you guessed it, the size of this payout does increase to your beneficiaries the further you are into your policy. So it pays out more to your beneficiaries the later you pass away in your term. This can be helpful to help combat inflation as it ensures that your loved ones will have sufficient cover to cover costs when you pass away. And lastly is something called level term. So this ensures that the payout to your beneficiaries is fixed and always the same regardless of when you pass away during the policy term. So this can be ideal for those with younger children and families as you want to make sure that they are covered irrespective of when you pass away. Looking at a cost perspective, the premiums are typically the cheapest with a decreasing term policy with level and increasing term being more on the expensive side. So that is all of life insurance types covered. Now let's look at the type of life assurance, which is also known as whole of life policy. So unlike the term policy, this policy doesn't have a specified term of cover as it is continuously ongoing and will pay out when you die, whenever that occurs. Now, because when you do take out this policy, the insurers obviously do know that they will have to pay out at some point because not to sound too morbid, but everyone does die at some point. So this usually means that the life assurance or whole of life policy is more expensive than the life insurance alternative. You usually have to pay the premium until the day you die. However, there are some policies where you can actually define an age at which you stop paying. Let's say it's 80 as an example, but it will still pay out even when you pass away after that age. So there are actually two types of whole of life policies that you can consider. The first one being is something called balanced cover, sometimes called standard cover. And this means that your premiums will stay the same throughout the entirety of the policy and it will pay out the same amount when you pass away. You usually agree on a fixed cash sum with the insurer before you take out this policy along with the premium. The other type is something called maximum cover. This is when your cover is linked to an investment fund. So what happens here is that every time you pay out your premium, the insurer takes this cash and invests it in the market in the hopes that the returns made from the market will be sufficient to cover the costs of the payout to your beneficiaries. However, because markets can fluctuate, the performance of your investments means that your premiums will be reviewed periodically. So for example, if your investments aren't doing particularly well, your insurer can perhaps give you an extra charge to cover the costs 
increase your premiums, or reduce your payout altogether. Maximum cover does tend to start off as the cheaper of the two whole of life policy options, which you know can still hold true, but because markets can never be certain, whether it actually stays cheaper isn't actually guaranteed, because I remember if the markets do perform poorly, the insurer may decide to increase your premiums as a result. So now that we've understood the main types of life insurance and assurance policies, let's understand why you may need one. Now, obviously, first off, there are quite a few types to consider. And although it's not an easy task to figure out which one is the best for you, it definitely helps to understand what you want to be covered from the policy. And this can be down to a number of various factors. And I'll run through a few example scenarios shortly. But ultimately, it does tend to boil down to understanding who is or who will be financially dependent on you and will need support when you pass away. So some of the scenarios to consider are, so the first off is if you pass away before your mortgage is repaid, then the responsibility to complete those payments will fall onto someone, most likely your partner. Having life insurance or assurance can ensure that this obligation is covered, even if you are not around. And this is where decreasing term insurance might be ideal, because remember, this is typically the cheapest of all of the insurances. When you do get it, it does work by reducing the payouts to your beneficiaries the further you are into your term, which does go hand in hand with a typical mortgage life cycle. The debt does tend to get lower through its own term. Therefore, it justifies having a lower payout the longer time passes. Another reason to consider is that if you do have a significant other involved in your life and on top of that, you may want to decide to create a family. This will increase the financial dependency on yourself as well as your partner. So you may want to get life insurance or assurance to cover any costs that will occur. For example, paying for your children's education or ensuring they or your partner have a saving buffer when you are not around. Both life insurance and assurance could be worth considering here. Another reason for life insurance or assurance is inheritance tax. Now, if you want to learn more about inheritance tax, check out my earlier video, which I'll link in now. Um, but if you do know that inheritance tax might be potentially applicable to you when you pass away, this can actually see parts of your estate be charged 40% in a tax bill, which will be left to your beneficiaries to pay. Now, because this can be quite a hefty sum, you may want to help them with this. And you can actually factor in this tax bill into the cover when you take out your insurance policy. So when you do actually pass away, there will be enough cover to cover for any tax charges associated to inheritance tax. Another option is that you can put your insurance policy into a trust. And if applicable, that means your assets can be exempt from inheritance tax altogether. I'm not gonna to dive too much into this as this goes more into the inheritance tax route. And this really does deserve its own video and I'll be sure to cover this at some point soon, but it's still worth noting that this is something to consider. Cool, so now that we've had an understanding of the main types of insurance policies out there and why you might need one, let's figure out how you can find the best life insurance and assurance deals on the market. Now you can use any major online comparison tool to do this for you. I'll put links in the description box down below for a few options. Now, normally when you do click on one of these tools, they will ask a few preliminary questions to determine which uh, is the best price and product that they have on offer. Now, most of the questions that they do ask are relatively straightforward, but there is one slightly tricky question that they do ask, and that is how much you actually want to have covered in your policy. Now, this can actually be a difficult number to try and quantify, but usually these comparison websites do have a tool inbuilt within them to help you figure out an appropriate number. Now, as you can see from my example, I did a quick search on comparethemarket.com. And as you can see, depending on the type of cover, for my case, the cost of these premiums were ranging from 15 to 30 pounds per month. According to data from comparethemarket.com, these are the average costs per age bracket when it comes to taking out insurance and assurance. And I'll put them on the screen for you now. And one last thing that I would like to mention is that you can actually take out multiple types of cover for different reasons. For example, perhaps maybe you want to cover your mortgage. So you might get a decreasing term specifically to cover the costs of your mortgage. Then you might want to take out an increasing term because you want to make sure that your family have enough cover when you do pass away. So you can actually mix and match, but be sure to check with your insurer and the policy to make sure there's no exemptions to this rule. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. So hopefully you have a good understanding of what life insurance and assurance is and what might be most appropriate for you if you would like to take one out. 
Obviously, if you do have any further questions, do let me know in the comment section down below. I'll obviously answer them for you. And as always, if you did find this video incredibly useful, I'd appreciate it if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the growth of this YouTube channel. And remember, I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye. <laughs>